Hey traders, Jason here from Lever Brothers. In this video, I'm gonna do an update on my State of the Market series. It's been a few weeks. Um, this is a hard market. I've been saying that now for a couple months. Instead of getting clean breakouts and follow through, we're getting a lot of false moves. Uh, instead of getting decent trends from leadership type stocks, the market's current leaders are not typically associated with it, with a healthy market. Uh, if you focus on the S&P 500, the market is doing fine. But if you look beneath the surface, there are definitely some issues. Uh, which I'll talk about here. So let's check out some charts and some numbers to try and get a sense of what's going on. So first I'll cover some index charts, then I'll show some breadth indicators, and finally I'll show some relative strength charts. All right, let's get to it. All right, so what we have here is, this is the S&P 500 monthly, and this is the Dow Global monthly, which includes the S&P 500. So what I wanna point out is that there was a time that the S&P, the United States, was leading, and there's possibility that that leadership role is um, starting to, to give way. Okay, so here we have, you know, S&P higher high, global Dow lower high, S&P higher high, global Dow lower high, S&P higher high, global Dow moved up but was still lower than that. Then, this big drop last March was less than this big drop, okay? And on, on the recovery, you have higher high for the S&P, you have lower high for the global Dow, but things now, okay, so there's no doubt that the United States was leading. It was the strongest market for several years, but things might be changing here. Okay, so one, you can see, this is this month's candle right now. So you can see that it got you know, that's the high from last month and that's the high from this month. So you can see it clearly got well above last month's high. Whereas in the U.S., you got there's the high from last month and there's the high from this month. So the U.S. was, you know, they they printed a higher high, but not by much. And now the U.S. is down for this month 2.3%, whereas the global Dow chart is up about 1.8%. And when you consider that 42% of this global Dow chart is the US, if you back out the losses from here, this would probably be you know somewhere up here. So instead of having a 1.8% gain, probably be more like 3%. Okay, so on a very short-term basis, we got uh, you know 2.2% loss here and probably like a 3% gain here. Okay, maybe money is shifting elsewhere. For whatever reason, doesn't matter. It's something to keep in mind. It's possible that maybe a lot, you know, a, the bulk of our trades, maybe not the bulk, but certainly a, a decent portion of our trades going forward might be in foreign stocks um, rather than U.S. stocks. This is not, it's not hard to do. There are, you know, easily over 100 stocks that are headquartered in other countries that trade on the U.S. exchanges, uh, but it might be, you know, we're always looking to play the strongest stocks and the strongest group, so we might want to pay a little bit closer attention to uh, stocks that are headquartered elsewhere. All right, so now let's look at, uh, here's the S&P weekly chart. Okay, obviously in a super strong uptrend. We have support here from the weekly 21, which is the orange line, support here, support here, support here. So higher highs, higher lows, steady trend. You can't be anything other than super bullish the s p um for now okay if it if it drops and takes out its 21 here and moves up and gets rejected by the 21 fine all bets are off but from a long-term perspective the s p 500 weekly is in really really good shape zooming in here is the s p daily okay going back about 10 months or so Okay, support from the 50, which is a blue line, some support gets a little messy there, support there, support here. So we're there right now. See, so S&P once again is testing its 50, and uh, the index is now below its 21. So the, the orange line here is the 21. I'm going to mark it up. It looks something like this right now. It's hard to read. If, if the S&P falls and comes here and gets rejected by the 21 and drops, that's going to be an issue. Okay, right now I'd say everything is salvageable. You know, higher highs, higher lows, they're in place. The 50 so far has held. Um, certainly you gotta, you gotta manage individual positions appropriately, um, but per the index, it's not in too bad a shape. Certainly nothing worth panicking about. It certainly gets your attention, but you don't have to panic. But if things get worse from here, then situation changes. 
But now let's look at the NASDAQ. So here's the NAS. Okay, incredible run off the low. Support from the 21, support from the 21, support from the 21. And for the very first time, and this is the weekly chart, so we only got you know the rest of today, the rest of Wednesday here, plus Thursday, Friday to, to see where this candle closes. But if it closes below the 21 here, it'll be the first close below the 21 since way back here. Okay. Overall, I consider the NAS to be in a range, just like that. Okay, which in the grand scheme of things is not a big deal. When the you know the, the index more than doubled off the low, it's perfectly and it's it's entitled to move sideways in a range for six months, nine months, even a year. So I don't think there's reason to panic. Um, overall, the market's doing you know in this case it's just kind of neutral, moving up and down. Uh, you have to manage individual positions, but the overall market isn't completely broken yet. Okay, NAS daily. Okay, you can see there was you know consolidation pattern here. Market broke out, then it moved up, and now we have a much bigger consolidation pattern, which I'll draw with. Okay, somewhere in here. Okay, so the, the Nasdaq has simply moved up and down in a range for the last couple months hardly a big concern now if you zoom in if, you, if you're trading like day to day week to week this is frustrating but if you stand back look at the big picture there's nothing wrong with the market resting for several months after such a big run-up but in the near term some issues uh some things to look at it's a 21 tends to be a, you know pretty good support and resistance in a trend so you got support there from the 21 there 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 but here the index took out the 21 came up got rejected by the 21 and fell again okay we have support from the 21 here the index took out the 21 came up got rejected there fell came up got rejected by the 21 right there and fell again okay so right now the 21's in control and if we come up and get rejected again and we start pushing lower here you know this this topping pattern is is more likely to, um, it's going to start looking more like a topping pattern than anything else. Okay, something to keep an eye on. Right now, I consider it neutral in a range, but it's kind of fragile and sensitive right now, and there's not that much room for error. All right, now let's look at a couple of indicators. Um, here's the SP 500 up top, and with the NYSE AD line, this is the 10 day of the AD line, the 20 day. In the 50 day so as you can see overall it's not too bad okay the ad line has been the 10 day of the ad line has been rotating up and down in a range this is pretty normal yes there's a little bit of a divergence here it happens you get a little bit of weakness okay so you get a little divergence here you get a little bit of weakness that's pretty normal um, the 20 day is acting similarly we have movement up and down within a range okay everything looks good here the nyse looks good here we know this because the SP is doing fine. The NYSE is doing great. Um, I don't see any major warnings here. Now, if we get, you know, if we get moves down here and then a, a failure to get back above zero and it kind of, kind of does this, then, then the situation changes. But for now, the SP 500 looks good. You know, this trend looks really good. The internals at the NYSE look good too. But here is the situation with the NASDAQ. So this is the 10, 20 and 50 uh, day moving averages of the NASDAQ AD line. Okay, situation is going to be different here. So in a, in a healthy market, you have, you know, lots of prints above zero and occasional print below. And what does the market do? It tends to just trend up. But obviously, this is much different. We have, you know, prints down here. Uh, we have prints straddling the zero line, a lot of prints below zero. So even though the S&P not the SP, even though the NASDAQ moved up for a couple weeks here and right over here, it actually printed an all time high. We were getting a lot of prints below zero here. Definitely a warning, definitely different. You know, this situation here is definitely different than this situation here. Looking at the 20, it's kind of similar market doing well. You get a lot of prints above zero market, you know, just continues on here. We got market going up, but we get, we have a lot of prints below zero. So even though the market was moving up and we had a new all-time high right here, you got it, you know, decliners were beating advancers overall. Okay? And then you look at the 50-day and it's been declining for a couple months and now we got, you know, prints below zero. So there's a big difference between 
the NYSE, which is generally doing pretty well, and there's but there's obviously some weakness at the NASDAQ. Okay, a few other indicators uh, that really highlight this stuff. So this is the percentage of S&P 500 stocks above their 50-day moving average and the percentage of NASDAQ stocks above their 50-day moving average. As you can see, print over here is at 73. Print over here is at like 34. Okay, market's healthy, so you get you know, 70, 80, upwards of 90% of S&P stocks above their 50-day moving average. That's pretty normal. But yet for the last almost three months, you've had less than 50% of NASDAQ stocks below their, above their 50, okay? The NASDAQ tends to do worse than the other indexes because there's a lot of garbage stocks at the NASDAQ that don't deserve to be publicly traded. So at first, you know, weaker numbers here don't matter. And what I mean by that is like here we have prints in the 70 and 80% range, while prints here are more in the 60% range, okay? That's normal and that's perfectly fine. But when you start getting prints you know, 70, 80% here, but 30, 40% here, that's a problem, okay? At first, it's not a problem, but if it continues and it gets worse, then it eventually becomes a problem. This is the biggest problem the market has right now, is the fact that the S&P 500 is doing fine, the, the NYSE is doing fine, okay, as evidence and proof of right there, but there's problems at the NASDAQ. There's not a lot, you know, participation there has definitely declined. All right, so let me go through some key groups now. So this is the semiconductors, okay? They're important. They, the, the chart looks like the NASDAQ. This is the semiconductor leverage ETF. Obviously, it's in a big range. There's pretty much no scenario that the market could sustain a move up without the semiconductors participating, okay? You know, housing's done great, fine. Um, a lot of commodities have done great, fantastic. You know, utilities have done a little bit better, great. But if the semiconductors are going to be weak, the market could bounce anytime it wants. It could sustain a little, like a mini rally anytime it wants. But unless the semiconductors actually keep up and do relatively well, the market's not going to sustain anything to the upside. Okay, so this is going to be something we have to keep an eye on. Today it gapped down and has recovered, so that's a good sign. Um, but there's lots of resistance overhead. Next chart, this is the software. My comments with software are pretty much the same as with semiconductors. There's almost no scenario that the market's gonna sustain anything to the upside if software is gonna decline is is gonna lag by a lot. Okay. A lot of software IPOs last year, lots of fanfare, stocks gapped up on IPO day, they pushed higher, some of them like doubled, but almost every single one of them has just gotten crushed and they, they're trying to base and they make they look like they're occasionally going to move up, but they're just, they haven't been able to sustain anything. So like the semiconductors, I see almost no scenario where the markets can sustain anything to the upside without soft, the software stocks um, at least participating to some degree. All right, let's look at some relative strength charts just to kind of highlight um, where money is flowing. Here is materials versus tech. They traded on par with each other, but over the last few months, materials have started to lead. You know, so you have stocks like you have copper and steel stocks that are doing well better than tech. That's not a good recipe for a market rally. Here are financials versus tech, same thing. Okay, financials have been leading tech for over six months after underperforming. The market typically doesn't do that well when financials lead tech like this. Uh, here are industrials, like boring old industrial stocks are doing better than, you know, hot technology stocks. It's not a good recipe for the market to rally. Oops. Um, here is growth versus value. Growth, of course, led for the first half of uh, 2000. We had a lot of huge winners. Um, 2000 was one of the best years to trade I've seen in a long time. Uh, but starting last September, growth started to underperform. Does growth have to lead? Um, it probably doesn't have to completely lead, but it'd be nice if it actually, if it at least traded on par. Okay. So right now it's in a definite downtrend. Growth is under, is underperforming. We need to at least keep up. If it underperforms, like I've said before, the market could bounce a little bit, rally a little bit, but it's not going to sustain anything to the upside while growth is lagging by such a large amount. And here is uh, small caps versus large caps. Along with growth doing well and then underperforming, small caps did 
extremely well at the end of last year, the beginning of this year, and now they're underperforming. Do, do small caps have to lead? No, by no means. Okay, there's a lot of great large cap companies, um, but we don't want to see them lag by too much. Okay, so overall, I consider trading to be very hard right now. Okay, the market just isn't acting right. It's like the wrong groups are leading. Um, I like to trade aggressively when trading is easy, and that's definitely not the current situation. In fact, I'd say a key to trading is to make as much as you can when trading is easy so that you can comfortably lay low when trading is hard. I like to trade the easy and obvious trades, um, the easy and obvious setups. If I have to search really hard to find good setups, then something isn't right because when times are good, it's usually I usually have too many. Uh, but if I have to search really hard and I can barely find some, that's a sign. Okay, so we need tech to improve. We need semiconductors to participate more. We need software to do better. Uh, bounces and mini rallies can take place at any time, but I see no chance the market sustains anything to the upside if semiconductors and software don't participate. And if they drop, well, look out below. All right, that's it. Uh, hope you got something out of this. Give it a like, share it with your friends. I'll see you next time.